so far in this lesson, we've learned about many amazing functions to help us do conditional counts, sums, and average, count FS, sum FS, average FS, etc. But there's actually another way you can do this using the amazing sum of product function. So to review the sum of product function, which we discussed in some of our first few uh, videos in our first lesson, you can do sum product that takes one array times another, a row times a row, or a column times a column. So we could take this column times this column. We get 3 times 1 plus 2 times 2 plus 4 times 3. What is that? That's 19. Okay, nothing amazing about that. But the cool thing you can do with sum of product involves this like minus minus thing. Okay, and so if you put in a range of cells, what sum of product will do is look at that entire range. If you know array functions and formulas, which we cover in a later lesson, this will be reminiscent of that, but you don't have to use array functions or formulas to get these tricks to work. Okay, so basically, if you put in a range of cells with sum of product, Excel will go through that range and do whatever you tell it to do. And if something is true, it puts a true there in an array, and otherwise it puts a false. Now, when you put the minus minus in front of that, the trues and falses convert to ones and zeros, with true becoming one and falses become zeros. So here we have some data, which we use in our pivot table lesson, if you studied that. We have, for each row, the month of the year, we have the product, we have the country, the revenue, and the forecast, which is the budget. So you might want to know how many times, how many rows in this spreadsheet was the revenue less than the budget? So the revenue is in column D, and the, uh, or less than or equal to the budget, less than the budget. And column E is the budget, so you say D2 through D208 less than E2 through E208, put that in parentheses, and if you put the minus, that'll give you trues and falses. This will be true because revenue is less than budget. This will be true. This will be false. And then what you do is the minus minus will convert that array from where there's a true to a 1 and false to a 0. So if you try this out, formulas evaluate formulas. Okay, you got the trues, and then they become... ones and zeros, and then they just get added up. You get 113 times revenue is less than budget. Now, you might want to know how many transactions was revenue less than budget by chip? Well, then you've got the part that right here with the minus minus. This is the revenue less than budget, and then that'll give you ones and zeros. And then you say, looking at column B, which has the chip for that row, does it equal, let's say, chip 1, chip 2, or chip 3? So this creates an array with the minus minus as a 1 when basically... The chip is chip one, zero otherwise. This creates an array where there's a one if revenue is less than budget, zero otherwise, and they get multiplied. So the only time you can get a one when you multiply ones and zeros is if they're both one. So if the revenue is less than the budget and it's chip one, you'll count it. And here it's chip two because it's referring to F7. Here it's chip three. So we now know a breakdown of how many times revenue was less than budget by chip. Notice these three numbers add up to 113. Now we can find out how many transactions involve each country, which really is just a count if. Uh, and we can find out the total revenue by country, the total revenue by chip, and the total revenue by chip and country. So the transactions involving each country, that would be just, again, a count if. So you look at column C, that's got the countries. Does that equal France? You get trues and falses. The minus minus converts them to ones and zero. You get 75 transactions involving France, 66 U.S. and 66 Canada. That adds up to 207 rows. You can see we have 207 rows, so that's good. Now, the total revenue by chip, you put the chips here, and then what you do is a little bit different here. This says column B does the chip in that row equal chip 1, then you get 1s and zeros with the minus minus, and that gets multiplied by the actual revenues. So we only count the actual revenues when it's chip 1, here we count them with their chip 2. Here we count them with their chip 3. They add up to this amount, which is, the, this is the total for all the rows. I just did that by adding them all up. This is the total for these three, so I know it's right. What is the revenue by country? Well, then you're just going to use column C and set it equal to France, U.S., or Canada. So you have column C. The minus minus makes that a 1, an array within a 1 whenever it's France, a 0 otherwise. Multiply that times the revenue. Add those up, you get the same number, so that's got to be right. Now you can break it down with multiple criteria. This is like a sum if s. We have the chips listed and the products listed. So we do a minus minus. Column B will be basically 
what's the chip? Does it equal chip one in this case? Make a one, an array with a one if that's the case or otherwise. This will be, does the country equal France? A one in an array, if that's true, zero otherwise. So when you multiply those two together, the only time you get a one is if the, if the row is chip one France. And then that gets multiplied by the actual revenue. So this parses it on two criteria. You can see how I can do it on three or more criteria. Add those up, you still get the million twenty six two seventy eight. So this is really quite cool. I think count if s, some if s are easier. But like if you have Excel 2003, AI pity you. But basically, that's this is sort of how people often did things before they, uh, count if s and some if s were introduced in Excel 2007. Now there are other ways to do this, and we have them discuss them database statistical functions. And you'll see in arrays there are other ways to do these conditional sums. But basically, you should know all the ways to do things. Okay, I mean, I think that's very helpful. Okay, so thanks for watching. And, and there's a free course, a free 21-day course from Dr. Winston. Um, and all of these videos are coming from one of three books. So first, this one, which you can see here at the top of the screen, um, Microsoft's book, which has 355 reviews. Uh, and then it's, let's see, 4.6 stars. Um, it's coming from this book as well, his marketing analytics book, which is down here, and you can sort of see 4.5, or his newest book, his analytics stories book, which is here, and with that one, you can see it's 4 point something, or maybe even 5, I don't think it's 5, yeah, 4.8, and so yeah, anyways, in the description, there's a free 21-day course from Dr. Winston, um, or you can go to excelwithwayne.com slash free, and it'll be there, but again, thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, just uh, please let us know, thanks.